Hi everyone, I uh, wanted to do a video on something that means a lot to me. Uh, it's called Gita Sar and it's from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, as many of you know, I was born in India and I was basically there until I was 12 years old, uh, which is when we moved to the United States and I've grown up here. I'm 44 for those of you who are not sure. And uh, I'm very proud of my age. I'm not, <laughs> I think it's kind of silly when people hide their age because, you know, growing old isn't a privilege. So, you know, I'm grateful and I'm proud that I've, I'm lucky enough to be 44. Uh, anyways, let's get into the Bhagavad Gita. So it's originally in Sanskrit and, of course, in Hindi. And uh, the Bhagavad Gita was the dialogue that um, Lord Krishna had with Arjun on the battlefield, the Mahabharata, the main battle, the big battle. And um, Arjun was feeling a little soft. You know, he was a great warrior and um, had some questions. And, and Lord Krishna was his, uh, was riding, was his chariot. You get Lord Krishna to ride your chariot. I mean, wow. And so um, Arjun had questions. And Bhagavad Gita is the conversation, the dialogue between Arjun asking the questions and then the Lord Krishna answering those questions. And the Bhagavad Gita, the, the Gita Sar is actually just one sort of, you know, segment of that. But it's something that uh, it, it's just beautiful. And it, it really just has, it drives how I've lived in the world, in this life. So let me read to you the um, English version of it. And then we can discuss it a little more um, in a minute. So it says, why do you worry? I'm reading off a laptop. So that's why I'm looking away. Why do you worry without cause? Whom do you fear without reason? Who can kill you? The soul is neither born, nor does it die. Whatever happened, happened for the good. Whatever is happening, is happening for the good. Whatever will happen, will also happen for the good only. You need not have any regrets for the past. You need not worry for the future. The present is happening. What did you lose that you cry about? What did you bring with you, which you think you have lost? What did you produce, which you think got destroyed? You did not bring anything. Whatever you have, you received from here. Whatever you have given, you have given only here. Whatever you took, you took from God. Whatever you gave, you gave to him. You came empty handed, you will leave empty handed. What is yours today belonged to someone else yesterday and will belong to someone else the day after tomorrow. You are mistakenly enjoying the thought that this is yours. It is this false happiness that is the cause of your sores, your sorrows. Change is the law of the universe. What you think of as death is indeed life. In one instance, you can be a millionaire. And in the other instance, you can be steeped in poverty. Yours and mine, big and small. Erase these ideas from your mind. Then everything is yours and you belong to everyone. This body is not yours. Neither are you of the body. The body is made of fire, water, air, earth, and ether. And you will disappear into these elements. But the soul is permanent. So who are you? Dedicate your being to God. He is the one to be ultimately relied upon. Those who know of his support are forever free from fear, worry, and sorrow. Whatever you do, do it as a dedication to God. This will bring you tremendous experience of joy and life, freedom forever. I mean, how beautiful is this, right? And, you know, um, I have to tell you, I was just having a conversation with a friend of mine earlier today and I was, we were, went out, I'm in Alabama, as many of you know, so I'm catching up with friends that I would normally have not had the opportunity to visit with. And I was asking about a mutual friend going, you know what, I, I didn't see this person, you know, so and so. And they said, well, you know, they don't come, you know, they, they just, you know, they, they don't come for, um, for whatever reason. And, and, and then we just started talking about different people and whatever, and, you know, and, and, you know, I, I'm glad that there's people that are doing really well for themselves financially in the material world, right? That's wonderful. Great. Let's all be rich and good and powerful. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's really sad to me when one starts to get caught up in 
the material possessions that they own and they start to over identify with them as their sort of identity um, and and so then what happens when you lose all of that you know who are you who are we you know what what are we doing on this journey of life you know this goes back to the very first you know day that I made the video um, you know I believe you know that we are just souls having a human experience you know, we chose to be born. Um, again, you know, we chose our soul families. You know, we chose who we would be born to. Um, and we chose, you know, who, what lessons to learn in this lifetime. And, and that's all we're doing. We're just playing out the lessons because ultimately it's about, you know, figuring out and getting back to who we are. And who we are is we are all from God. So part of it is we are all from the big energy spirit of God. Um, Neil Donald Walsh, again, my, one of my favorite authors, wrote this children's book called The Sun, The Sun and the Sun and the Child. The children, I, I have to find it, but I have like 20 copies of that in my in my garage. The Sun and the Soul, that's what it's called. And it's a wonderful, simple illustration of this whole process of Okay, so continuing the story um, from Neil Donald Walsh's um, The Sun and the Soul, the story basically is that there's the souls are all up there with God um, in the big energy of God. And uh, one little soul has this desire to accept, to experience um, joy, forgiveness, uh, one of those, uh, actually happiness, I think it was, I can't remember. And so um, he says to God, I want to experience what it's like to, you know, experience happiness. And he goes, yeah, but you already are that. He goes, yeah, but I don't know what that's really like because I am that, but it's so positive. I, I, I don't know what it's like. So God says, okay, I know, I have an idea. Why don't we, you know, go back down and you can experience the opposite of happiness. So then you would then have something to compare it to and then you will know what happiness is. And so the soul goes, really, I can do that? And God goes, of course you can do that. And so the soul goes, great, I'm going to do that. Let's do that. Um, so then, but then how will I do that? So then another soul steps up and the soul goes, um, you know, I will, I will come with you and I will give you the opportunity to experience uh, forgiveness. So I'll do something so you'll have pain and you'll get to experience forgiveness and then you'll experience happiness and whatever you know the case might be and I'm watching up the story but you know that's the overall gist is there and so um the soul the little soul that wants to come down and, and experience this says oh thank you I'm so excited about this you know I really really thank you for doing this for me and so they show this little you know the illustration shows a little trunk like um with dress up clothes in there and the soul and his friend who agreed to be the bad person and you know give him the opportunity to learn go up and, and you see him pulling up this dark heavy coat and putting it on and so his bright beautiful light is dimmed and uh, he says to him listen just remember that you know when we go back down there and um, I'm doing this don't forget I'm just playing a role I'm not really the bad person and um, he goes yeah yeah of course I won't forget I won't forget well sure enough you know fast forward the story you know the baby's born the soul is born and so is the other one but the other one is born with his guardian angel and by the way, uh, apparently we have up to four guardian angels that we are assigned at birth and they leave us when we die. Um, and we can always call additional ones, but we have at least four that are assigned to us um, that are with us and are really looking out for our benefit. Um, anyway, so then of course the minute he's born, he forgets, right? Which is what we all do. We forget why we're here. We forget that we made these soul agreements. We forget um, why we really decided to be born into this life. We forget the lessons we chose and when it actually is happening to us, what do we do? We get upset. Um, we start to get bitter. We start to get sad. Uh, you know, we start to blame, right? Um, my son calls me today and says, you know, some friend of his is going through a hard time, you know, got some girl pregnant and, and now is like, you know, wondering where's God? You know, God, why didn't God, if God made this happen, then there cannot be a God. And it's so funny to me because you decided to have sex with this girl, which knocked her up. But now God was supposed to be miraculous and not get her pregnant. I mean, you know, but I was like, listen, no judgment. You know, just you speak your truth. 
uh, and help him recognize, you know, that it's lessons, it's choices, it's consequences, you know, it is what it is, right? Um, so the Gita Sar coming back to it is is um, quite amazing because it just, for me, it just makes me realize that, you know what, I didn't come with anything. Everything that I came, I own. These are all material possessions. When I die, literally, we all, no matter who you are, I mean, look at the Steve Jobs, right? The man could have had the moon at one point if he wanted to because the man was getting, it was up there. And yet, when it came down to it to fight the disease, the cancer, he had nothing in him. Nothing was, there was nothing he could buy. His death was written and he had to go. And what did he take with him? Six feet of the grave, right? It's just, that's all we ever get. And so it really puts things in perspective, you know, when we're chasing the material. Yeah, we all want to be rich and famous and, you know, have good things, but what are you taking with you? What is the purpose of all this? Well, the purpose is to serve. The purpose is to experience God, it's to experience ourselves in the beauty of God. Um, you know, when things are the toughest for me and I'm having one of those days when I'm feeling really bad for myself and sorry for myself, and I've had plenty of those days, I've learned that when I take myself out of the equation and I start putting myself in service to others, somehow my my pain just sort of evaporates um and you know it just it seems to work for me so i would suggest you try that you know service um voluntary service is a altruistic form right what does that mean that means you know we are doing it for others but really we get more from it than we do it from others so let's get back to this. You know, what do we come with and what do we leave with? You know, we come with nothing and we leave with absolutely nothing. So the only thing we do take with us is our our deeds, our good deeds, our bad deeds. Um, and that's all we take with us is this, you know, our, our karma per se, right? What are we doing? Um, I also want to talk about the concept of intention. I think, you know, um, a lot of times people do good deeds for others but they want the recognition for it, right? Why are you doing something good for others? Are you doing it so that you can, you know, people can recognize what a good person you are? Or are you doing it just because you wanna help, you wanna serve? Um, and I think that intention determines your karma. So if you're doing it just out of the goodness of your heart, great, your karma is wonderful. But if you're doing it because you want the recognition, then your karma is tainted per se. Um, and again, you know, I don't think when you're helping someone, your left hand shouldn't know what your right hand is doing. So what does that mean? Don't talk about it. You know, if you're gonna do something, don't bring it up ever. You know, you should never say, oh yeah, yeah, I did so and so, you know, because then why are you really doing that? Always be cognizant and mindful of why we do and say the things we do, right? I recognized a long time ago, you know, I was doing these things and saying these things and I would recognize I would drop these little things because I wanted people to think, oh, she's such a nice person. And I realized, well, there's a lot of ego involved in that, right? I don't want to do it for that reason. Why do I need recognition from other people? Do I, am I not enough within myself? And of course, at that point, I wasn't. But recognizing that and then stopping myself um, was one step in the right direction because then I realized, no, I don't want to do it for that reason, correct? So anyways, um, I just want to say thank you for listening again. If this has been valuable to you, uh, please share it. Please comment. Your comments do mean a lot to me. And uh, we'll go from there. Take care. God bless.